So one of the first things we did on our wonderful rehearsal period, we rehearsed, mm -hmm. and we made the movie in 19 days, 19, one nine, count them, yes, intense. Um, but we did have a few days rehearsal, which saved us a lot. And so Sophie had these fantastic exercises. So we would lie on the ground and draw around our bodies, and then, I mean, it's a wonderful thing to do anyway. Big pieces of paper, you draw, and then you, you, you mark on your body where are the places that you... You, you think you like or you don't like or things that have happened to your body. Um, and then one day we, we spent the entire day with no clothes on because we had to get used to I mean, you're German, you're used to it. It's like, you know, it's nothing for you. But we're not quite as at ease with nudity in the, in the sort of slightly further towards the puritanical... <laughs> it's so tiring. <laughs> anyway, we, that was incredibly helpful. So we, we threw ourselves into the rehearsal space um, and were brave there before we had to be brave on set. And I, I thank Sophie for that. And I thank Daryl for being, you know, I mean, obviously Daryl is very beautiful and has a body like a fucking unicorn. So, you know, it's just, <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe that's so perfect. Um, so, so, I mean, he, it was easier. You think it's going to be easier, but it never is easy, is it? It's just difficult suddenly to do that. Mm. So good question, which I have not really answered. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's all about, it is partly about the body and, that, and everything it contains, and particularly for women, the shame. Daryl, would you like to add anything to that before we move on? Yeah, no, I just agree with everything Emma just said. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, she'll always have the better answers, okay? So just, <laughs> but um, no, I, I'd agree. I think it, we were beautifully led. Sophie created such a beautiful foundation for us. Uh, I think on our sixth day of rehearsal, we finally got to the intimate scenes and stuff. And by then, we were really kind of ready to jump across that, you know, threshold into vulnerability. And yeah, it started so kind of simple about, you know, what we like about our bodies, what we don't like about our bodies, which is so universal. And from there, I guess, you can find the strength to kind of take yourself in fully. And yeah, it was a very simple process and kind of we were all holding each other's hands, you know, through that. So it was, it was very beautiful. I don't think that female pleasure has ever been at the top of the list of things that the world wants to make sure they have, put it that way. Um, and I know that in other countries it certainly isn't. And in my country, you know, this was not something... That we, it's not important that we have pleasure. It's not important. No, it's not considered important. Um, so, you know, Nancy's not growing up or, or going about in a world which is constantly saying to her, actually, have you ever had any pleasure? Has anyone ever asked any of the women in this room whether they've actually really had any pleasure? Who asked you? <laughs> Your mother? <laughs> a mother. A, a lover. lover. A lover. Well, that's good. <laughs> yes. But I think it's sort of reasonably uncommon, but possibly not in, in sort of metropolitan circles. But Nancy, as she says, she says, you know, the sexual revolution, which is... That's a, bit, a whole other discussion, obviously. Um, but she says, you know, we, we, we didn't live in London. We lived in the countryside. No, I think if you went into the British countryside and the German countryside and the French countryside and asked all the old ladies who were sitting on their stoops in the sun, you know, how many orgasms have you had? Um, you'd, you'd be surprised. Um, so so I, think it's, I think it's a very common thing, um, not absurd in any way. Um, and I'm sure I've met people who've had that experience. And in fact, some of the young women I know uh, who've seen the film say, well, I was 30 when I first experienced it. So I think we're, we don't talk about it, and I also think we're quite dishonest about it. Thank you very much. Do, so do we have to talk more about sexuality and intimacy in of course. society? That's the whole point. That's the whole point of the movie. You know, that's why one of the reasons I'm sure why Katie wrote it. And that's what's so interesting about it, is that we're hoping that there'll be a long conversation through this year about intimacy and what it really is and what pleasure is and what shame is and why we feel so ashamed about the strange pleasures that we seek and we feel. The last scene, is that what you were asking about? Um, Where it's really well lit and you can see <laughs> absolutely everything. Is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah, no pressure. sure. Yeah. Uh, Berlin, Berlin is burlesque. It's full, <laughs> so, but it was beautiful. It was, oh, thank you. You know, real, uh, 
uh, what I wanted to, to ask is about the girl, the student. When you have a film where there's two people in a room and you're exploring the two of them, uh, it's very hard to see outside of their relationship, but you want to understand that what happens for Nancy might have an impact on her life outside of that room as well. Because you can tell that one story and she can learn and understand about Leo, but is that going to transfer out broader than that, particularly as someone that's a teacher? So I, I really loved um, you know, that scene and bringing Becky, the character, in and, and thinking about Nancy and her abrasiveness in that moment. It was really important. I, I was really um, pleased when Katie had written a scene where Nancy was quite abrasive because it felt like we needed to understand that what she presented for her whole life, you know, without challenging or questioning these ideals and um, this philosophy that she'd presented to the world. Um, to be able to see her shift in that space meant that she truly shifted rather than just that she liked somebody, you know, and she was being her best self. It was like we, we really got to see her transform. But um, Izzy Logland, who plays Becky, is excellent, just very dry and funny and gorgeous. And the final scene that, you know, we've well, we were, It was hard. It was really... Inter it's actually a really interesting question because... And here's, a, here's homework for all of you. When, because we're not used to seeing untreated bodies on the screen, we're only used to seeing bodies that have, you know, been trained it to, out of all... You know, something that... I knew that Nancy wouldn't go to the gym. She would eat too many biscuits. You know, she would have a normal body <clears throat> of a 62-year-old woman who's had two children. Um, I can't stand in front of a mirror like that. If I stand in front of a mirror, I'm always sort of... I'll pull something in, I'll turn to the side, I'll do something. I can't just stand there. Why would I do that? It's horrifying. So, <clears throat> but that's the problem, isn't it? That we've been, not you, but certainly women, have been brainwashed all our lives to hate our bodies. That's the fact of it. And um, everything that surrounds us is... <laughs> It reminds us how imperfect we are and everything is wrong with us. Everything is wrong. And you need to look like this. So you try, sta you try standing in front of a mirror, take your clothes off and don't move. Don't go, don't, just don't move. Just accept it. Just accept it and don't judge it. It's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. So, you know, I really, I, I did something I've never done as an actor.